Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray here. Today I want to talk to you about user loops. Now let's make a quick distinction. Right up here in the Apple Loop browser, you've got Apple Loops and you've got untagged loops. So these are third party. But what if you make your own? What if you, from the tracks area, you drag something in to the loop browser? You can actually make your own loops. What am I talking about? Well, let's pretend that we wrote in a MIDI part. You're using a MIDI instruments such as Contact or Thorn or anything by Fab Filter doesn't really matter, but you play in a part and you want to be able to access that part, you can just drag it in just like that, right? What's going to happen is that you'll have a dialog window pop up. Now you notice that nothing happened there because you have to have some MIDI drawn in, but as soon as you do, like I said, here, you can add this specific region to the Apple Loop li library and you can distinguish, hey, is this a loop? Is it a one shot? What scale is it in? And then you can apply some metadata if need be. Let's say you're somebody that uses the four on the floor kick pattern. Well, all you gotta do is go to my loops, okay? And you can start saving your own information. So you can save MIDI loops, audio you can even save the new pattern format so that's an actual pattern format there but to my last point if you're somebody that uses four on the floor a lot you can see that i've already saved this because this is something i do quite a lot in my productions so rather than having to recreate the midi or the pattern now all i have to do is just grab the loop pull it into my session Logic then will instantiate TRK because this is usually my kick of choice. And you can even see that I did my homework here and I even added four on the floor with double time. So here it is right here. All right, and then again, if I wanted to do that in double time, I could do that just like that. So the idea is that you have a system set up so that you don't have to do these things over and over and over again. So it really just depends on what kind of stuff you do. Imagine if you have hi-hats laid out. Imagine if you have uh, certain patterns that you find yourself using all the time. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes, etc. Here, check this out. Good. And then now it just becomes a question of finding the right sound inside of TRK. Okay. So that makes sense. So if you want to access your user loops, well, you're going to have to create them inside of Logic. Okay, so you can find them right here, My Loops. Now let me show you the actual folder where you can find them outside. Let's say you want to delete something for whatever reason. You're not going to necessarily be able to do that in here, but you can do it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up and go ahead and take note of the file path. So it's your computer users, your name, library, audio, Apple Loops. And there you will find the user loops folder and then finally your single files. And like I said, you can delete stuff from in here. If you ever get in a situation where, let me go to the very top. So you see this one up here is called 808 Destruction Kit, right? Let's say I change the name. Let's say I change it to that, right? So then now, if I close and open this, you'll see that I will not be able to select it because it, it can't recognize it. So there are two things you can do. You can go back here and spell this the right way so that it matches up and it correlates, or you can go into re-index all loops, and then after a moment's time, you will find that logic gets organized, it reads all the the loops again, and then you're kind of back to square one. And so this may take a little bit longer, but it's a sure way to make sure that your computer knows where your loops are and, and just kind of make sure that everything is talking to itself, okay? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're liking the content, guys, we're asking you to sub, we're asking you to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, smash the share button. And look, we thank you very much for this time we've got so much great content planned out for 2021 so if you like what you see if you like what you hear again go ahead and sub and we will see you guys on 
the next video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again. There it is right there.